Hello grade fives, welcome to Solving Algebraic Equations. Today is a very exciting day. We are going to be putting all of our steps together to solve algebraic equations. You're going to be solving equations to find out what number the variable represents. And this is why I like algebra so much, because it's like a fun riddle. To solve algebraic equations, we have to follow certain steps. Even though you're going to be able to easily identify what number the variable represents, it is important that we follow the steps. The purpose of learning this in grade five is about understanding the steps rather than finding the answer. This is why we're using very simplistic addition and subtraction equations to begin with so that you can focus on the steps rather than focusing on the calculation. When you look at this equation, n plus four equals 10, I know that most of you can easily see that n equals six. We don't really care about this so much, in grade five, we are not really learning this. You've already learned this. We are focusing on the steps for solving algebraic equations so that you know what steps to take as the problems become more and more complex and the answers are not as obvious like this. It may also be very confusing today, which is okay. Uh, and the more you practice and the more we do this and the more you follow the steps, the more you will understand how to do this. Today, we are going to learn the last and final term of solving algebraic equations. It is called isolating the variable. In order to solve algebraic equations, you have to isolate the variable, which essentially means to get the variable all alone on one side of the equation. In order to do this, we have to combine the two terms we learned this week. We have to do the inverse operation, and then we have to balance the equation. So that's why we learn those two separately. So in order to isolate the variable, First, you need to find the operation and determine the inverse operation. I'm going to go through this with you now, and it's probably going to seem confusing because this is the first time you're hearing about this. It's normal to be confused the first time you hear about something. So the first thing I have to do in the equation is I have to identify the operation. The operation is plus 4. The opposite of plus 4 is to subtract 4. So the inverse operation is to take away 4. I want to isolate the variable. I want to get this n by itself. If I have plus 4 and I take away 4, I'm left with nothing. That would isolate the variable, leave n all by itself. But if I take 4 away from this side of the equation, my equation is no longer balanced. So I must do the inverse operation on the other side of the equation so that it remains balanced because this has already told me, n plus 4 equals 9, that it is equal. Once I've done that, I've got the inverse operation here on both sides. I can, n is now by itself 4, minus 4 is nothing, so there's just n by itself. But on the other side of my equation, I still have 9 minus 4. And then finally, I know that 9 minus 4 is 5. Some of you would have known right away that 5 plus 4 is 9, and you knew right away that this n is 5. But what we are focusing on in grade 5 are these steps, okay? Let's look at the steps together. It is really important today that you have this sheet. This sheet is two-sided. You have one side that says solving algebraic equations for addition and subtraction, and the second side says solving algebraic equations with multiplication and division. They're basically the same steps, but there are some differences. So this week we are focusing on solving algebraic equations with addition and subtraction only. While you are doing your work, you need to have this sheet in front of you and follow the steps. You're going to need to have more than one color to write in. And this is what each algebraic equation should look like when it is solved. We're going to go over some examples together. You can get a pen and paper if you want to go about the equations with me. But make sure you have this with you while we are doing our work this week. Okay, so let's look at these steps, solving algebraic equations with addition and subtraction. The first step is to write the equation. Each step that you move through, it gets a new line, so you skip a space each time. So write the equation, x minus 3 equals 4. I know that you already know what x is, but that's not what we're worried about. We are worried about the steps. Step 2 is isolating the variable. You want to get the letter all by itself. So to do that, we need to do the inverse operation. So the uh, inverse operation of minus 3 is to add 3. Whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do it to the other side of the equation so that it remains balanced. 
So if I am adding 3 to this side of the equation as my inverse operation, I must also put the inverse operation on the other side of the equation so that it remains equal. So step 1 on the second line underneath it is step 2. You can see right here this is what it will look like in your book. Step 3 is to complete the math on one side only of the equation and we always complete the side with the variable first because the whole goal is to isolate the variable to get it alone. I know that you can probably do all of this in your head, but as these get more and more complex, you will not be able to do them all in your head and you will lose track of what you have done. This is a true story that happened to my daughter. So it is important that in grade five, you start to establish these important routines. So you are going to complete the math on the side with the variable. I know that if I have three, minus 3, I'm left with nothing, which leaves x by itself, and then I'm going to leave this 4 plus 3 here. I know that you can do that in your head, but you're just going to leave it. So the next line says x equals 4 plus 3. And I've just put brackets around my inverse operation uh, so that I know that that is my inverse operation. The last step, is, or sorry, step 4, is to rewrite the new equation and complete the math on one, that side of the equation. So now you can do 4 plus 3, which we know is 7. And on the last line, step 5, uh, you were just going to solve the equation, but we always put the variable equals and the answer. So x equals 7. I know this to be true because if I was to rewrite this with 7 instead of the x, 7 minus 3 is 4. This is what it would look like in your book or on your piece of paper when you were done. A new line for each step. Okay, let's look at some more examples together. You can see that I've got two pages up here. That's so that we can look at our steps at the same time as we are solving an equation, which is what you should be doing today as you are working through your work and you should be doing for the rest of the week and next week. So in front of me, I have my sheet with the steps to follow. And here is my question. So step one is to write the equation, which I believe will be done for you. So n plus five equals 12. You then want to underline the operation. So the operation is plus 5. The next step is to isolate the variable, to get my variable n all by itself. To do this, I need to record my inverse operation in a different color. I also have to balance the equation at the same time so that my equation remains the same on both sides. So the opposite of adding 5 is to take away 5. So I need to take away 5 on this side to isolate the variable. If I take away 5 on one side of the equation, I must take away 5 on the other side of the equation. The next step is sort of in your head. You are going to do this part plus 5 minus 5 in your head. It's 0. If you're doing the inverse operation correctly, it's always going to be 0, which means on the next line, you have your variable by itself, n equals 12 minus 5. I still have this part of the equation to do. Then the next step is to rewrite, oh sorry, I've done that, the new equation. Then the next step is to just solve. 12 minus 5 is 7. Either you do that in your head or you write somewhere 12 minus 5, 7. This is what it should look like when you're done. Four separate lines. All the work that you do today, you need to use your strategy sheet. We are going to look at another example together. Okay, so here is my strategy sheet again. Here are my equations and what it looks like. So step one, write the equation. You don't have to do that because uh, it's already on your sheet. So you're going to, the next step is to isolate the variable. You're going to record the inverse operation in a different color and balance the equation by writing the inverse operation on both sides of the equation, ideally in different colors. Uh, so let's underline plus four is my operation. Think in your head, what is the opposite of adding 4? Well, it is minusing 4. So on the next line, I am adding my inverse operation to both sides of the equation so that it is balanced. So I have n plus 4 minus 4 equals 12 minus 4. The next step is to complete the math on the side of the equation with the variable. Yes, again, I know you can do both of them in your head, but it is important that you just do one side of the equation at a time. So you're going to do the side with the variable. Plus 4 minus 4 is nothing. That leaves me with n all by itself equals 12 minus 4. So that's the next step is to rewrite the new equation on the next line, which I have. Then you're going to complete the 12 minus 4 and write your answer on the next line, n equals 8. I can check it. 
He is 8 plus 4, 12. Yes, success. Good job, Miss Pringle. Let's try another example together. n minus 6 is 10. I know that you already know what n is. Step 1, done for you. Write the equation. The next step is to isolate your variable. So you need to get your letter all alone. To isolate the variable, you need to do the inverse operation and then balance the equation by doing it to both sides. So what is the inverse whoops, operation of minus 6? It is to add 6. So on the next line, I'm going to rewrite my equation with the inverse operation in. n minus 6 plus 6 equals 10 plus 6. So you can see here, I have the inverse operation on both sides so that it remains balanced. Then I'm going to complete the math on the side of the equation with the variable. 6 minus 6 is nothing. So I have n all by itself, and I'm going to leave on the next side the 10 plus 6. So I've rewritten it on the next line. On my final line will be my answer line. Now I can do 10 plus 6. n is 16. Now I can check. Is 16 minus 6 10? Yes. Oh, good job, Miss Pringle. Hooray again. So you can see here that I've underlined the operation. On the next line, I've used a separate color so that it's clear where my inverse operation is and that it is on both sides. So this is an example of the worksheet that you are going to be working on today. There are six questions of practicing addition and subtraction for algebraic equations. You can use a calculator if you would like for the adding and subtracting. You don't have to, but you certainly can because our focus is not on the answer, it is on the steps. You can see here that the instructions say to start a new line for each part of the equation. Solve one part of the equation at a time and rewrite the remaining part of the equation on the line below. So here is an example. And you have one, two, three, four lines. Ideally, you are starting a new line for each part of the equation and you are following the format and you should have your strategy sheet with you while you are solving these. If this is hard or you are confused, please come to our office hours today. They should be from 10 to 11, but they may have changed since I've made this video, so please check our homepage and come to the office hours if you are having problems. Good luck and have fun.